because there's this connection between that basic science we're thinking about and how we can imagine, right? And I think that imagine word is an important word. How we can imagine these things contributing to very, very important and you know, driving human health problems. The solutions uh, that we see require a huge amount of creativity. They require thinking outside of the box. They require keeping your eyes on the prize and then figuring out, well, what kind of creative way can we use to actually get to that prize? So it takes a really special kind of person to be able to deal with failure um, on a daily basis um, and to keep coming back and asking for more because they're just really passionate about science and about um, solving puzzles and making discoveries um, and, and advancing science uh, for the good of humanity. But I think a lot of the serendipity is sort of keeping your eyes open to what you see and sort of follow these, these questions to, to try to understand how these things work since they are so uh, interesting and complicated and fundamental to human health. The characteristic of a good question is one that you can make observations or do experiments to actually answer. And that is often a very difficult thing to do. And so sometimes it's said that the very best scientists are the ones that formulate the best questions. When you're in this cool, really interactive and collaborative research environment like PNRI, like the greater Seattle research community, we run into a wall, we run into a problem. We're not gonna keep running into that wall with the techniques we have. We're gonna take a step back and say, all right, how do we solve this problem? You can come up with some really interesting ideas and interesting new ways of looking at things. But also you just never know long-term, um, you know, when something is going to be a key discovery to find a project, to find a question that's really motivating, that's fundamental, that's fascinating, and chase that question.